Hi, everybody. I'm Barry Rosen. Um, you are kind of, uh, uh, in, it's an integration class for my Varga 1 class. It's the first class of my new class on Varga 2s, and we have a number of guests today and people that will be watching it um, on videotape, as you know, people often sign up for these uh, promos and then come, um, uh, you know, and watch the videotapes when they have time. Um, I usually kind of hide behind the curtain because I have to keep so many things on my screen. Um, and if, if I'm looking at myself, it's just too much. So if I say become the wizard of the screen, you'll understand. Um, I, I usually start with some chanting. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, specifically give an overview of the Varga 2 class and some of the Vargas that we're going to study there. And then we're also going to we have some new knowledge on how the sun, the moon, and the aquarica show up in the Varga charts and kind of what they mean and, and some of the techniques for looking at that, that but in a general way. So if you don't know too much about Varga charts, we'll, we'll try to teach you a little bit. I had suggested, um, I have another introductory talk um, on Varga charts um, that's on YouTube. I I'd sent it, a link to it. Hopefully many of you watch it. I'm going to review a few of those points, but I actually the point of this talk is to do some new points and to kind of give an overview of the Vargas that we're going to cover in that chart. Vargas is a word meaning divisional charts, and it's the way that uh, we divide things in a subtle way. So I'm going to first um, 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 uh, um, I will um, unmute people who are actually um, I will unmute the microphones at some point so that you can ask questions. For now, I'm just going to kind of go into my Chanting. Um, this is my contact information. For those of you who want to reach me, uh, Barry at AppliedVedicAstrology.com. Um, I do respond to email quite quickly. Um, you can also text me on Facebook through Barry Rosen. Most of you know me from my columns on Facebook, either Barry Rosen, Astro Yoga, Spiritual Astrology, Vedic Astrology Classes by Barry Rosen. And I also respond to Skype. I have an office number, and that is listed here also for those of you who need that. Um, I'll leave that up for a minute. Um, so this talk is going to be about two hours. Um, I, 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 my format is to kind of stop um, and do questions, um, you know, when I, when I need to pause my voice. Um, it's hard for me to kind of monitor questions um, um, during the talk because there's just a lot going on. So um, I, I will look up for questions. You can type questions in on the chat box, but um, uh, and then people who are in, uh, my students, I will um, I will unmute you so that you can ask questions at some point too, um, and we can do that. Um, so uh, I usually start my classes with some chanting, um, so you can just sit quietly. And the, the chant, the purpose of the chanting is it quiets the mind down and makes it more sattvic so that we can receive knowledge. Um, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganapatiya Namaha, Om Ganapatiya Namaha, Om Ganapatiya Namaha, Vakritunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samabraha, Nirvigyam Gurame Deva, Sarvakare Shisarvada, Jnana Mulam Guru Murtim, Puja Mulam Guru Padam, Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam, Guru Kripa, um, Sahana Bhavatu, Sahano Bunaktu, Sahaviryam Karva Bahai, Tejas Finava, Titamastu, Ma Vidvishai Bahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Om Adita Ye Samaye Mangule Budaye Cha, Guru Shukra Shani Vishara, Huve Ketave Namaha. So honoring the great ones, Lord Krishna, Goddess Arswati, Goddess of Wisdom, Vedavyasa, writer and cognizer of the Vedas, and the holy tradition that I'm most connected to through through Brahmananda Saraswati. Um, and I stand on the shoulders of many great teachers, particularly honoring my Jyotis teacher, Sanjay Roth, Mill Sutton, and Bill Levesey, although I have many. Um, I want to welcome Jamie Bateman, who's my assistant. She's been helping me edit my books, and um, I'm going to unmute her. Um, Jamie, do you want to introduce me a little bit and say something about my work? 
Yeah, I'd love to. Hi, everyone. Welcome today. Um, I've had the privilege of being one of Barry's students for the last couple of years and then um, working with him as well. Uh, we've been working together on Barry's book. He just released um, Finding Your Blind Spots about a month ago. And then we're also working on the uh, upcoming transit book for 2019 and 2020. And it's, it's just been really great. Um, I have been a student of astrology. Well, I've been interested in it for ever since I was little and just, you know, trying to learn things um, from a Western perspective and, and even looking at um, Chinese astrology. And I've had a lot of, of questions um, and I've, I consider myself a spiritual teacher so, or seeker. Now I'm, I'm, I'm not teaching, but um, I had a lot of questions and I've been, you know, searching for answers to, to things about my career and my life and why things weren't happening for me and um, experiencing a lot of blocks financially. And I um, have a virtual side business that I was struggling with, or I'd find, you know, certain spots that would just kind of explode and boom. And then all of a sudden I, I tank um or just experiencing relationship problems and i was finding that this was just occurring you know time and time again and i couldn't understand why and um so i went through a lot of different paths and wasn't finding answers and so i thought there's got there's got to be something out there that can help me and i turned to astrology and of course the path that i was most familiar with was western and um i wasn't finding what i needed there started doing some transcendental meditation, found out about Vedic astrology, and um, as um, synchronicity would have it, um, I got in touch with Barry and started following his blogs on Facebook and um, eventually became a student. And I've been just kind of plugging along with him um, for the past couple of years. And I just wanted to pop in and, and just, give him a, a plug here because you know Barry thinks outside the box you know it's not just your mainstream um, you know this is the zodiac and these are the 12 signs and these are all of the houses and these are the planets and you know this is what they mean and um, they're just main significations I mean Barry really has been studying this for over you know I, I believe for over you know 30 years and um, he continues to study and, and it's a passion of his and I, you know, could tell that from the start. And so it kind of caught my attention and I realized that it wasn't just um, mundane stuff. And I'm a deep diver too and I, I needed more than what I was finding. And um, when I stumbled upon his classes, it just kind of really spoke to me because it helped me figure out from my own chart where my blocks were and, and why I wasn't seeking um, and getting the results um, in my own life um, of, of what I was expecting. And so a lot of that I've been able to clear and just working with him and, and talking to him. And um, Barry's really personal and he knows the students and he knows you know his stuff and he's been doing this for so long and, and he integrates, you know, um, other principles too, which I really liked and has helped, you know, with just color work and herbs and um, timing and, you know, transit events. And you, you're not just looking at one thing, but I also like his cookbook approach too. So it made it easy for me to understand because I've attended, you know, other classes that wasn't helping because it was, it was too far over my head. So what I really appreciate and I wanted to say about Barry's classes that I've been following along with is it's it's accessible you know the information to me and I could understand and I felt comfortable about approaching him and asking questions and he's available um, one of the things when I first um, got to know Barry in his classes was I wasn't able to attend live and um, he would even just check in with me from time to time you know by sending a personal note and I was really surprised by that um, because, you know, you usually approach this class and, and then, you know, that's it. You know, your, your teacher, your professor, it's, it's like a ghost out there. And, um, you know, Barry's a real person. And I, if I had questions, I could reach out. And he even offered, he's like, hey, I'll, um, 
hop on the phone with you for 15 minutes or whatever if you have questions you know how are you doing Jamie you know are you enjoying the classes and I was like wow you know this is this is great you know there's there's a human being out there who who actually cares you know about my learning too so um, I would just encourage you know if you have questions or you know ask you know enjoy the classes you know um, it's 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 about your life too and uh, find really finding out you know where your blocks are but um, Barry's been able to help me um, work around you know like I said my own blocks and understand what you know yagyas are and you know where where's the weak points in my chart and what can I do about that and how can I strengthen those areas so I can work with those points in my chart rather than work against them and work against myself and um, so it's it's been quite the journey and I'm looking forward to continuing along and um, I've taken some of his classes you know even twice because he continues to find you know more information and he updates it and upgrades and like I said he goes outside the box too and, and finds stuff that um, others aren't teaching and talking about or they're not willing to talk about because maybe you know they think it's taboo or um, it might reflect karmically on them or something and, and Barry's Barry's not afraid to go out there and stretch and and I love that um, about him so uh, I I just want to say you're in a great place um, so if, you know share and there's a lot of good students here too you know it's great to connect with people and um, I just wanted to come on and um, you know talk a little bit about Barry and what he does and and how he's helped me and how much I appreciate him and and all the work that he puts into these classes because he does pull, pour his whole heart in and spends a lot of extra time outside of just you know a couple of hours each week on TV. so um thank you barry i do appreciate everything that you do and um i'm really looking forward to the varga 2 class and learning more about um all of the the charts and just diving deep into joyches because there's so much to learn you know it's it is a vast ocean um, and you make it, you know, enjoyable and exciting. And um, I feel like I can actually understand it and grasp it. <laughs> so, um, you know, thanks for doing the hard work for us and, and, and doing all your research and pulling it all together into something that we can actually, you know, understand because I know Sanskrit is, is not easy and, and trying to understand uh, Parashana is, is difficult enough and, you know, all the sources out there and, and somehow you're able to manage to kind of bring it all together so we can get a grasp on it so we can, you know, be our best, highest selves. So um, thanks so much. Thank you, Jamie. I uh, appreciate that. Um, uh, so what? Um, before we start today's talk, I, um, it, um, again, uh, many people will be watching this tape on, um, on video when they have time later in the week. Actually, about 51 people signed up to see the, the video, and we've got about 14 people here. Some, 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 most of them are from my classes. Um, a quick plug for my book, Finding Your Blind Spots. It's on Amazon. It's on my website. Um, uh, you know, one of the interesting things about books is um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of – I, I didn't write it, write it to make money. I mean, it's really, it's all about sharing knowledge and, and there's a lot of depth in my book. So I, I want to I encourage you to pick them up. The new transit guide is also coming out this week. At least the first part of it should be out this week. Um, and many of you have seen my transit book from last year. And this, this one is, um, um, we're putting new articles in it. Um, so it's going to be great. Um, next Saturday, um, I am, being hosted by Cosmic Insights uh, to do a, a, a webinar on um, Vedic financial astrology and you know, focus mainly on remedies. Um, so um, that there is a cost for that. For those of you who are interested in in it, um, you, can, um, you can go to cosmicinsights.com website to sign up. Um, um, and uh, it, it's, it's a two and a half hour talk. Uh, there is a free event also next Friday. Um, which you can sign up for. Um, going to be a guest panelist with Sam Jevy and and Pundit Samavedala and another lady who I don't know. Um, I'm talking about this year's 2019 transits. It's going to be a four-hour event starting 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, 
and uh, Kishanakti is hosting it. Um, uh, for the, most of you get my newsletter. Um, there's a there's a, a, a Laurel a URL on the front page of the newsletter. How to sign up for it for free, and, and the URL is here also. Um, uh, okay, um, I'm not going to go into any of this other stuff now. Let's get to our talk. Um, okay, um, so um, this is like a, a summary course for my Varga one class, and so those people are here in, in, in the. It's I'm calling the Varga two class the subtle Varga charts, um, and we'll see why in a minute. We are going to finish up with some of the more um, um, what I would call physical vargas, um, like the, um, but but we we do need to um, the, the the varga um, most of the vargas in this chart are more kind of subtle. They deal with the kind of mental levels of the body and the subtle bodies, and they're kind of interesting. We'll, we'll learn about that in a minute. Um, I am going to, you know, given the audience that's here, is I'm going to. Um, um, I just unmuted. Um, well, actually, let's see. I'm gonna unmute you, although it's, um, and then you can unmute. You, you can mute yourself. That has control of your microphone. So you have to turn your microphone from green to red, um, so that your the noise in your home doesn't bleed into the tape. But I've just all unmuted you. Um, most of you know how to do this. If you don't. Um, uh, uh, Tejal, you need to kind of mute yourself, and, um, and uh, uh, Jackie, you need to mute yourself. If not, I'll just I'll support you and just mute yourself myself. So that's okay. So most of you, that gives you control of the mic when we have time to ask questions. So okay, great. Um, uh, okay. So um, for, again, I, I um, uh, have to be. I'm kind, of kind of in an odd position. When you put together, put hours into these courses and you make about $10 an hour, you, you still have to kind of like kind of promote them. But um, um, the, the first Varga class, for those of you who missed it, is available in its entirety now for $295. Um, if you want to do smaller packages, you can get a package just covering the Navamsha chart, which has like six tapes plus three other tapes, nine tapes, um, and also I'll, I'll talk about this at the end, but for those of you who want to come into the Varga 2 class, um, I can also make sort of payment plans for you. Um, so again, I, I stand on the shoulders of many great teachers. I want to, for this talk, I want to acknowledge Camille Sutton, G, uh, G.K. Gohl, Hank Friedman, Sanjay Roth, and Zoran uh, Restoslovich. Um, um, so Vargas, um, just for a few people who don't know too much about Vargas, and we have like another 50 people there, can you listen to the videotape. Um, Varga chart analysis separates good astrologers from mediocre astrologers, because sometimes you'll look, you know, if you've had a reading and somebody says something really good, you've got something really great in your chart and it's going to manifest, and it doesn't, um, it's probably because they didn't look real closely at a lot of subtle things in the chart. Um, Varga charts allow us to read like strands of DNA and to see when things will manifest in detail. And, and that's, um, they really, um, w when you really learn the details of Vedic astrology, you realize why some things just don't work. And, and, but the answers are always there. Um, so quickly, um, there, I, I sent this out to you. If you haven't watched um, Lesson one from my Varga one course. It's kind of a review of the basic principles of looking at Varga charts. Um, so we always look at the rising sign of all your of, of, of a Varga chart and where the Lord is, um, and that's just the basic principle. So we want to know if if the rising sign has a, a malefic planet in it, like Mars, Rahu, Saturn, or Ketu, that may create a subtle block, um, a karmic block in that area of life. So if you have Looking at the D10 chart, which governs career, let's say you put Saturn in the first house and Aries in the D10, it means that you know you're going to have a lot of blocks to your career. It will go very slowly. It will be, be you know, it will be blocked. And it, your career chart may look good in your in your in your natal chart. When you look at the D chart and you see Saturn debilitated in the first house, then you suddenly understand why things aren't happening in your career. So um, that's one of the first things. And then uh, if you don't have any planets in the first house in the D1 in the D charts, then you look at where the Lord of that chart is placed. So um, just to get specific, I'm going to have to use my 
orgit charts to be very specific. So um, my Deshamsha chart, um, um, I, my career chart is very strong, actually, um, in some ways, because I've got lower the 10th and the 5th and Pisces, and, and it's actually, my, my son is the strongest planet. So my career is very kind of well-placed here in, in the main chart. Um, in the in the in the in the Deshamsha chart, the D10 chart, it's ruled by Mercury, and Mercury is in the seventh house um, with two benefics, um, and it, it's in the sign of Pisces, where it's a little bit debilitated. Now, this would suggest I would have trouble with business partnerships, which has been true, but um, because of the Venus cancellation with the exaltation, actually, my career is uplifted here. Um, in this chart, and, and the moon is also benefic. It's also helping it here in Pisces, a friendly sign. So um, that's that's one of the things that you kind of have to remember to look at. Um, you can you can see what's going to happen in a specific Varga uh, chart in terms of where, what's going on in that dasha period. Just this is a review for my other students too. There's a principle called Baba Suchika, and I'm, gonna, I'm going if you again if you don't. Um, uh, this is kind of review of material that people have gone through. So um, I'm in a Rahu period, and um, um, uh, I'm in a Rahu period, and I'm in, I'm in Rahu Mercury at the moment. So um, my, um, the nature of my career could be, you know, in this particular period, could be judged from the from the Varga chart by looking at Rahu. Here in the six, which suggests challenges. Um, we don't like planets in this third, sixth, eighth, or twelfth houses in the Varga charts. And career is, is has been a little bit challenged, a little, uplifted a little bit by by good luck with Jupiter here. My Mercury period um, is again has we've talked about that, but Rahu and Mercury are two houses from each other, and and uh, Rahu is in. Um, Sagittarius, it moves into Aquarius here, so it's moving three houses, and that's a three, 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 three transposition. And threes are threes cause challenges. So basically, um, my 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 Mars period was extremely strong for my career. We've got um, 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 Mars is in the second house here. It moves from from Aries to Tor, uh, to Libra here, it moves seven. So it did suggest a lot of business partnerships, which actually were fruitful. Um, but my Rahu period has has brought um, a lot of obstacles in my career, and you can see it in the Deshamsha chart. Um, okay, um, so basically, when you have planet problem, planets in the third, sixth, eighth, and the twelfth house, they're gonna cause problems in their Dasha periods. Um, and just this is a reminder: we don't usually we don't use aspects in Varga charts because it's the way they're divided up. We can't use traditional um, aspects in Varga charts. There's some exceptions to that, which we've studied in the Varga one class. We can use Rashi Drishti from Jaimini astrology, and that means the dual signs aspect each other and things like that. But can't go into all those details; I'll overwhelm you. Um, and then we always look at the Karka in the Varga chart. So if you're looking at children, you're looking at the fifth house. Um, in the Varga chart, you're you're looking at Jupiter, which is the Karka for children, and and to see where Jupiter is. And we had a bunch of cookbooks for going through Vargas, but okay. So let's keep moving on. So um, um, the 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 Varga charts are divided up by the elements. So the the, the more physical elements, we can actually. I, I didn't have D9 here, but. Um, Actually, D9 and D12 would also be included here, but so um, the, the more physical Varga charts are D1 through D12. They discover they they deal with our physical world more. So the, the D4 chart is about property and our homes and inheritance. The D7 is about our children. The D9 is about marriage. The D12 is about our parents. The D3 is about siblings um, and, and more of our physical energies. Uh, the D2 is about wealth. So they, the, the early Varga charts deal with the physicality. Um, as we move into the higher Varga charts, which I'm just, you know, we're dealing more with mental energy with the water element. So D16, D20, D24 all deal with kind of mental energies. Um, 
and we'll talk about those and give an overview of that in a minute. These are things that we're going to study um, this winter. Um, the D27 element is connected to this, uh, the fire element, to the super consciousness, um, and the D27 and the D30 chart kind of, these are kind of more subtle levels of the body. Um, they're more kind of astral karmas. The D45 and D40 chart deal with the air element. They're, they're connected to ancestral karma. Um, you know, actually, you know, all the lineage of our, of our grandparents and great grandparents and great great parents are contained in these subtle charts. And, um, I'm actually going to combine a couple lessons where we look at the, the D12 chart, which is about parents with the D40 and D45 chart, which is about, uh, ancestral karma. I'm very interested in ancestral karma because we find the Vedic, the Vedic, um, uh, uh, lineage is very kind of interested in in honoring our ancestors and even though they've passed they're kind of there and they impact us and things that they've done kind of impact us and they and their support is also there for us and they have holidays to honor the ancestors and, and it's very important to understand ancestral karma because it, it impacts our lives and I, it's something i've done a lot of work on the last couple of years and sometimes you find out that even the things that you're going through are not even connected to what you've done in this life it's just because your grandparents did certain things i, I had a client whose um whose parents actually were very involved in genocide in in the pakistani um indian war in 1948 and a lot of her life was blocked in many ways because there are a lot of angry uh, souls that you know had been killed uh, by her parents in a very kind of difficult situation during the indian pakistani war and we had to have uh, a Vedic pundit do a lot of uh, um, ceremonies to kind of release all this energy so that her life could move forward, and it did. So very, we're very connected to our ancestors, whether we like it or not, genetically um, and karmically and, and in many different ways. Um, the D60 chart, which we've study, studied in, in Varga 1 class, is about um, the space element, and it's the more subtle levels of the Vargas. And, and it's the most, one of the most powerful charts. We, we had a wonderful time discuss, discussing it. We will not get to do it again, um, but it's available in our Varga 1 class. The D60 chart is about past lives and shows all the accumulated karma. It's quite fascinating. Now, in this class um, that's coming up, now, I, I should mention that for those of you who are on tape, uh, watching us on tape or are live here and have not taken our first class, um, you can you can step into Varga 2 class by just watching three tapes. There's three, um, which, and, and, and this tape also, there's three basic tapes on how to do Vargas. And um, one of them is free on YouTube, which you can, which I've sent you a link for to listen to. Uh, there's two more um, included in the first set that are very important. Um, and if you if you're interested in stepping into the Varga 2 class, um, you can just watch those three tapes, and you're watching this one now, and you can enter, because we're studying different things. Um, you know, in, in Varga 1 class, um, we studied uh, the Navamsha, which in, in great detail, because it's very important for everything. We studied the D60, because it's, it's a very important chart. Um, we studied D4 and D7. Um, um, D7 is for children. But a lot of these charts are kind of self-sufficient in their own, so you don't have to have studied um, all the, the all the other charts um, that we studied in work, but one to step into this class. Um, all you do have to review two or three tapes. So if you're interested in coming into this live class, there will be an opportunity for that. So in this class, we're going to study the Drekana, uh, which originally was scheduled for Varga one, and then we moved it here. And um, Drekana is is um, divides the chart into three equal parts of ten degrees, and, and the Western astrologers call that to Contes, um, and, um, and they tell us something about personality. They're very useful for medical astrology. That, to me, is the most interesting thing about them, and we'll spend probably an hour, an hour and a half looking at that. It's one of my passions. Um, you know, they also can tell us about third house affairs like courage, siblings, short travels, and mental thoughts and processes of an individual. Um, there are there are three or four different kinds of Drekana charts, and they're, they're, they're calculated differently. And there's one called Samanath Drekana, which we'll look at, which tells us about sexual inclinations. Um, and third house um, um, is is a very sexual house, um, and it connects to Matuna, 
in, in which means connected to Gemini, Gemini, which in Vedic astrology and Sanskrit means Matuna, Matuna, uh, which is means copulation. So third house is, has a very kind of primal energy to it. It's about uh, aggression and um, uh, is governed by Mars. And there's a lot of sexual energy in the third house. It's quite and the Drakana can um, can show us about that. Um, there's another type of Drakana chart called. Um, Varnasi, the Varnasi directed a chart that reveals past karmas and fruits of karmas. Um, and, and there's an important um, element that we always have to look at in anybody's chart, which is called the 22nd Drekana, which can reveal deep elliptic karma when it will manifest. And people are always kind of scared of these things. But it's good to know about them and when they're going to manifest, what you can do about them. And so we'll look at that in, in the Drekanas. Um, the D2 chart, which we didn't get to, um, is the horror chart and it re refers to wealth. And there are four or five also horror charts. Um, some of them, um, uh, when, when you pull up the horror chart, um, which is the Parashara one, it, it kind of doesn't make sense because uh, basically the way it's calculated, all the plant, plants go into Leo or Cancer. And, and, you know, I was always puzzled by this when I first looked at it because, you know, what do you do with this? How do you calculate somebody's wealth from that? Um, you know, these are kind of actually, um, you know, tell us more about our, our solar and lunar energies. Um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we come from our father and our mother. Our solar and lunar, and lunar energies are ma masculine and feminine energies kind of embody our energies. And, and the way the planets distribute in our masculine and feminine energies kind of reveal something about the personality. And they also, um, there are all kinds of techniques for dealing with this. Um, uh, and it's kind of fascinating, but there are other um, there are other horror charts that actually are more specific about wealth. And in um, Sri Jodi Star allows you just kind of click and kind of look at them, and and we'll take a look at all of those also. But um, um, they're they're kind of interesting. But this is the one that most most charts pull up, and we don't know what to do with it. We probably could spend two lessons on horror. We may need to because there's so many interesting things to do with it. Um, the uh, the Dwada Shamsa chart um, is the D12 is connected to our parents, and I, I think I'm going to lump it together with the D40 and the D45 because it's all about parents and ancestors, and um, and I think we all have to kind of study that together. Um, we can look at inheritance in there. We can see the qualities of our parents in there. It turns out um, and this is kind of odd. Uh, the, the planet that's in the D12, uh, if the sun if Venus is stronger than the sun, then it represents the father in the D12. Um, if the sun is stronger than Venus, then, then you look at that as the karka. And in the moon, the other karka for mother is Mars, which, you know, to me is kind of mind boggling. Um, but it's one of those kind of funny things in Vedic astrology. So in the D12, um, we have to look at moon and, or Mars to see which one is stronger to see how to represent the mother. Um, we can use these charts to predict the death of parents to look at lineage, and we can resolve ancestra and inherit karma by looking at this area. And again, I'm kind of fascinated about this. We'll probably spend two lessons talking about um, ancestral karma, um, looking at parents and, and, and ancestors. Um, the Shoda Shamsha chart, that's the D16 chart. This is where we start moving into the mental bodies. And um, the, the D16 is four times four. So it's connected to the fourth house, which is the house of the mind and the house of happiness uh, and the house of vehicles. Now, uh, maybe that's why if you watch this, the latest uh, Honda commercial, they have people like ecstatic in ecstasy because they got this incredible offer on their Honda at their Honda dealer and they go into this rapturous energy is, is why that commercial probably works because, you know, vehicles, I guess, give us happiness. But you, you can just look at the D60 chart to, to look at your vehicle karma, maybe to see thefts and accidents connected to vehicle. But, you know, as you, if, you, if you get to know me and my classes, I'm always more interested in psychology and spirituality. And, and um, the mental energies uh, of the moon are in the, in the D16 chart. Um, so it turns out that the 16 phases of the moon from total darkness, which is the new moon, Amavasya, to the brightness of the full moon, which is called the Purnima moon, um, um, are connected to the 16 um, divisions of the Shodashamsa chart and to the 16 tithis or the lunar days, and their deities connected to each one of them. And so they're quite 
they're quite interesting and they show us mental endurance and mental patience and and um uh, they can show us the mirage of sensual activity um that can lead us to humiliation and unhappiness um they also tell us a lot about our luxury karma which um if we have nice things if we have nice homes if we have nice vehicles um and and to me that's more of a superficial aspect of it and hopefully we'll all spend more time on the deities and the the 16 areas of the mind um the d20 chart is one of my favorites um it's called vimshamsha it's connected to our spiritual inclinations and blocks to spiritual practice um and the trinal halls has become very important here first fifth and nine um the sixth house in the d20 shows us our blocks to on the spiritual path the ninth house tells us about our relationship with our guru and the fifth house may show us the deity that we need to worship to achieve spiritual progress um i'll just show you my my d20 chart which is actually one of my better burger charts um so first of all it's taurus rising i mean about northern india style here I, I use these southern in the classes but um my my uh, i've got venus and taurus here with an exalted moon um so obviously there's a lot of dignity in this chart um i i actually have been a very spiritual being my whole life and my whole interest has been moksha and and um you know I never until i studied bargain charts i didn't really understand you know my my in, my in my rashi chart i've got lord of the ninth the moon in the first house here it's not a particularly spiritual chart here i mean sun in the fifth is actually very spiritual but if you um if you were just to look at my rashi chart you, know, you wouldn't say this was a very spiritual chart but when you go to the vimshamsha chart you've got you know venus in its own sign um and you know, Taurus is very connected to Krishna, and I think I always have been very connected to Krishna. Um, and um, the moon here is very, you know, is exalted here, you know, suggesting I, I have a lot of bhakti and devotional energy. Um, sun in the fifth house here is going to connect me to Shiva. Um, and then um, Jupiter and Ketu here um, um, in, in, in Capricorn here, again, are about gurus. Now, Jupiter in the ninth is very powerful. I've had very powerful gurus in my life. Jupiter K2 creates deep devotion to gurus. Um, Rahu can create rebellion toward gurus, and, I, and that, that has happened in my life. So a D20 chart is kind of a fascinating chart to look at your spiritual life at. Um, D24 chart, which we're going to study, is about education, higher education, sports, language, professional studies, academic achievement, and breaks in education. Um, it does come up, people who are going to college and parents asking you about their college, you know, what's going on with my kids' college. Sometimes you need to, to look at this. I, I don't use this chart too much, but we will spend a little time on it. We'll probably um, only spend an hour on it because, you know, I think we want we we need more time on some of the other charts. Um, and so the, some of the other mental charts which are connected to the fire element are the D27 chart, which is sometimes also called the Nakshatra, nakshatra Amsha chart. And it's kind of nakshatras within nakshatras. Um, it's, um, it reveals hidden strengths of the mind and spirituality of a person. Now, so it, it's, uh, what's really interesting here is that because it divides, you know, obviously there are 27 nakshatras and the, and the, if you desire, divide the sign into 27 parts, you get kind of nakshatras within nakshatras. Now, people um, are going on the web talking about nakshatras in the bhamshas, which, which is not something that really exists, and I don't quite know where people are getting that. But if you really want to study nakshatras within nakshatras, you look at the D27 chart. And so, for example, my ascendant, which is on Arada nakshatra, which is connected to uh, spiritual friendship and the goddess Mitra and um, got, um, and and very much into spiritual networking. She really describes what my life is about. Um, on a deep level, it's connected to Shadabishak Nakshatra on the on the, on the, on the in the D7 chart. So it creates um, a, a deep fascination. Shadabishak Nakshatra is connected to Varuna and healing. It's, you know, it's the Nakshatra of a hundred positions. So. Um, there's um for those of you who know me well i i am very very involved i've been very involved in healing for 40 years although i'm not a doc, medical doctor but that connection with shadow um on the on the very deep level of, of the nakshatra is 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 creating a kind of a deep interest in in healing in my life and so it's very revealing of my my orientation in my mental life uh the d30 chart often scares people it's called the chart of 
misfortunes. Um, and um, it, it's connected to the five elements, to the senses, and, and to the problems we experience through the five senses. Um, so Mars is connected to the fire element, to sight. Uh, Saturn is connected to the air element, to t which is connected to touch. Jupiter is connected to the ether element, which is connected to hearing. Mercury is connected to the earth element, which is connected to smell. And Venus is connected to the water element, which is connected to speech. Um, this chart reveals our misfortunes in life and bad luck. And, there, and these, these misfortunes can be timing natural disasters, professional falls, accidents, uh, family property disputes, and all those ugly things that we don't want to happen in our life. But um, they are here in the T30 if you want to find them. We should, we should not get in the habit of looking for the worst in our life. Usually there's some Jupiter connection or some Venus connection or some benefic connection. Um, or some really positive connection that's hidden in the chart that kind of would, you know, block some major disaster. And sometimes we have major disasters in our life and they force us to move into major changes in our life, which are very positive and we wouldn't be the same person if we were. And I, I always told the story to my students of, you know, uh, in 1982, 83, actually, I, I developed, um, kidney stones and I had one every month and you know I was the doctor said I was going to be in pain the rest of my life and there was nothing they can do and it forced me you know it was a major calamity in my life at the time um, and it forced me to study alternative medicine I brought up that Chattabishak energy I was talking about and it forced me to be um, you know to really develop into kind of a healer um, and, and stuff like that the D30 also can show our moral character and it's connected to the Shadrupas, our six weaknesses, anger, greed, intoxication, lust, jealousy, and illusion. These are the things that kind of block block us. So I think analyzing the D30 chart is quite fascinating because you can see your mental weaknesses, um, where they're going to show up, and what you need to be aware of to kind of prevent kind of these, these blocks um, and, and, and problems to kind of come up. So D30 is quite fascinating in that respect. Um, okay, so um, that's kind of an overview of the new Vargas that we'll be studying in this in this in the second Varga class. And again, for those of you who have it, the, the first Varga class focused on the Navamsha class, the 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 the, the, the D10 chart, and um, the D4 chart for property, and the D7 chart for children. And it looks at the D60 chart because it's such an important chart. Um, you can just kind of jump into this uh, class um, if you have some experience with Vargas or if you can just catch up and watch two or three of my videotapes that cover the basic principles and you'll be able to kind of pick it up. So I just wanted to kind of show you what is going to be covered in this class. Um, so getting back to basic rules of review and synthesis in this class, we always connect Var uh, the, the D1 chart to the D charts, and we can never just look at at the Varga chart separately. Maybe the exception might be the D60 chart, which we talked about. You can read the D60 chart completely separately as it's as a standalone chart, but that's one of the only exceptions. You always have to go back and forth from the, the D1 chart to the other Varga charts. If something is not promised in the D1 chart and it is promised in in the Varga charts, usually there'll be hope for it to manifest, but it won't manifest. It has to be in the in the Rashi chart. So everything starts from the Rashi chart. If 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 children are not promised in the in the D1 chart and they're all over and strongly placed in 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 the in the D7 chart, you're still not going to manifest children. There'll there'll be a lot of hope for having children, but but it it won't manifest. So in the same way, sometimes if things are weak in the D, in the D charts, and if things are strong in the D charts, um, and you, you think you're going to manifest something, and there's all kinds of blocks in the, in the D charts, then, um, you know, again, there's promise for something happening, but, but it may not manifest. So you have to kind of always look at the two together. And we're going to develop some more, maybe even next week, we're going to kind of do a more solid review of cookbooks of how to kind of go from one chart to the next chart so that you get in the habit of always using your cookbooks um, and your recipes to examine any 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 D charts. Um, 
So if, if we're looking at the fifth house or the ninth house for children, we always have to look at the D7 chart to see, are they really going to manifest? If we're looking at property, um, which is usually connected to Mars for uh, landed property or K2 for like apartment buildings. Uh, and then we're looking at um, uh, the fourth house for property um, for home. We, we, you know, we always have to look at the D4 chart to see what kind of karma is going to manifest in there. If we're looking at the mind for the fourth house, um, which is, you know, if you've taken my secret of, secrets of the houses course, so much we have to do with the fourth house and the mind and the influences on the fourth house. Um, we also have to look at the D16 chart to see how it's going on in the mind in the D16 chart. If we're looking at higher education, we're looking at the ninth house in, um, in, in, the, in the Rashi one. Then we also then we have to go to the D24 and see if there are blocks to higher education. Um, my D24 chart um, is kind of interesting. Um, I have an, um, uh, my ninth house, Lord, the moon is strong, as Digbala is strongly placed here in the fourth house here. So uh, I have like 16 years of college um, and I have three or four degrees and just kind of a college junkie. So I, I very, really, I, really, I have a stationary Jupiter as uh, connected to higher education aspect in my fourth house also. But, um, you know, there have been times and interruptions in, uh, in my career chart and you, you see, you see kind of Saturn here in the sixth house. And so it, it's going to, it's, um, and sun in the eighth house. It turns out if you're going to have blocks to education, you look at the eighth house in, um, in, in the D24 chart to see what's when and when they're going to manifest. And there are times when I just had to drop out of my PhD program because I was in my Saturn return crisis. And, um, you know, I've had, I have had blocks along the way um, in education, but um, I ended up triumphing because of many strong features in my chart. Um, if we want to look at health and enemies um, connected to the sixth house, you know, when we have to look at the D30 chart because um, the sixth house is very, very much um, key um, in, in the D30 chart. So we have to go back and forth between the, the, the first house, the D1 chart and, and the Varga charts. So um, here's some of the basic um, steps. Uh, uh, these, this is some, some new material and integration material um, that I wanted to present at the end of my, D, uh, my, my Varga 1 class and for my Varga 2 students. Um, and we started going over it last week. Um, so one of the first things that we can look at is we can look at the Lagna Lord um, of, of the Rashi and all of the, all of the Varga charts to see where um, where there's strength and weaknesses. So we're looking, uh, one of the things that we always look at in the Varga charts is we look at dignity. Exalted planets make things three times as easy to get done. Debilitated planets make things a struggle and maybe you have to work three times as hard to happen. In between, you know, you, some, you get own sign, the Lichaguna, neutral sign, enemy signs. It tells you something. So the, so where the chart lord is placed in all the Varga charts, it's going to tell you something about the health and status of how planets are impacted in the divisional chart. So think, for example, if the Lagna Lord is exalted in the D7 chart, so let's say you're Sag rising and you've got Jupiter, which is also the Karka for children, let's say it's placed in Cancer in, in, the, in, the, um, in the D7 chart, then um, when, when you give birth to, to a child, it will elevate your status and health um, after birth. And if it's weak, and maybe maybe you have a crisis around health. You know, sometimes mothers give birth to a child and they spend a year recovering their health. And you can see that in the Varga chart, just based on where the Lagna Lord, the Lagna Lord is always connected to our, our intelligence and our physical health. And if it's uh, in the D chart, if, it, if it's strong, it's gonna increase something in that chart. If it's weak, it's gonna hurt something. I want to do some examples. I'm, um, I'm going to take some people from my students in the, in the chart. Afi, I'm going to, um, I just, um, I just unmuted you, um, so you, you can come on. Let's take a look at your, uh, let's look at, look, look at this principle in your chart. Um, so, um, 
So one of the things that, that you can do quickly, and I'm going to cheat here because I've got the software, and it's nice to have good software. Um, is you can you can look at um, now obvious satirizing, although I don't have that here. Um, this is a, a, um, so so we could we could quickly go down um, and look at where all of um office jupiter are placed in all her charts so she's got jupiter in her chart lord is in gemini um and in her horror chart she's got it in leo in 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 direct and uncharted she's got it in 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 and it's telling you in the column here it's neutral it's a great enemy it's it's in a um, own sign it's in rotation sign it's you know so you get to, to quickly look and see if we wanted to look at um, um, Chimshamsha, um, which you know is a place where we worry about misfortunes, um, her ascendant lord is um, okay. Her ascendant lord um, is 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 strong. You know, by by dignity, and it's in a good house. It's in the seventh house, in in the Trimshamsha chart. So naturally, you know, the chart lord being strong in the Trimshamsha chart is it's going to kind of protect her against a lot of misfortune. So that's that's how we might kind of interpret that quickly. So you can always one of the things you want to do is just look at where your ascendant lord is in all the charts, what kind of dignity it has, and then you could look at at individual placement in her Trimshamsha chart. He's got Jupiter in um, in the eleventh house, um, and and so maybe in her in a sub period of Jupiter there might be a chance for a relationship. But um, you know we we have we have to see if relationship is blocked in the Rashi chart. I, do, I should put the Rashi chart up here. Um, so so here's your here's your Rashi chart, which is D one. And um, relationship should be kind of important for her because the, the chart lord is in the seventh house. The seventh house can also be business relationship. Um, it is in an, in an enemy sign of Gemini, Gemini. And for those of you who have taken my blind spots class, you know, there's a kind of a Bodica influence. So there's some problems with relationship in the chart. In, in, in the Navamsha chart, Jupiter goes into the 11th in an enemy sign here also. Um, but we, we have to kind of look at some other things here um, also, but I just wanted to kind of show this kind of principle. Thank you, Afi. I'm going to, um, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to go into detail analyzing things now because I have a lot of material to cover. Um, so, the, so basically do a quick survey of where your, your chart Lord goes in all your Varga charts and see um, if, there's some dig what houses they go into in the Varga charts. Again, we don't want things in the third, sixth, ninth, eighth, or twelfth houses in the in the Varga charts. And we do um, we want to see we want some dignity, and then that will show you whether um, that event will lift up your health and your status. Um, what happens? So, for example, I think in my my chart, let's see. Um, I have kind of a weird chart because I'm ruled by K2 and Mars. Um, and K2 is an Aquarius here in my, my Sidamsha chart. Um, and Mars is in Scorpio in its own sign here. Um, I just want to, I just, I'm just trying to kind of make these principles more concrete. Oh, let's put in the D24 here. So um, I got very sick in college, um, and um, um, uh, so when I when I went to um, actually when I first started um, um, my first year at college, um, I, I you know I developed uh, I, I got very sick, and I also got very sick in graduate school, and so we should think that. Uh, 
K2, uh, K2 and Aquarius here um, in the second house, which is kind of a bad health house. It's not supporting health when I go to college. And even Mars, Mars has some dignity here, but it's also afflicted by Mercury here. And, and the, uh, uh, the, the 11th house is also kind of a health house because it's six from the six. So um, we can, we sense that, that um, um, my health was, and my status was kind of hurt when I went to college. Um, and, and you can kind of see it a little bit um, by the dignity of the Ascendant Lord here. And that's the principle I was just trying to kind of show. I know it definitely was there in, in my experience, but um, that's, that's one advanced rule of this principle. Um, so I just illustrated that. So facilitated in a bargain chart, then when that area of life happens, you may fall in status or health. I wouldn't say it was debilitated. In my case, it was afflicted. Um, so you don't want the Logna Lord in, in the D1, um, uh, in any of the D charts, very afflicted by one or more malefics because it may cause great suffering in that area of life. Um, and again, if it has conjunct a number of benefics, then it gets lifted up and has the opposite effect. Here's an example. If you have Taurus rising um, with, um, um, if you have Taurus rising with Venus in the D10 chart, um, um, and it's conjunct Rahu and Saturn, then it may create major problems in career. So look at the Log of the Lord in a Varga chart. If it's conjunct two or more malefics, it may create suffering in that area of life. So the Log of the Lord, you want to trace through all the divisional charts. And we'll have to practice this on my students on maybe maybe next week. Um, and you can do it. I suggested you do it for homework. Now, the other thing you can look at is... Um, you look at the favorable and unfavorable positions of the log of the Lord in divisional charts. Um, so you want to, one of the things you can always look at the quality of the sign. And, and I, I've mentioned to this to you before, I used to think signs were important, but signs give you very microscopic information. Aquarius, anything that has Aquarius and Scorpio shows past life suffering. Scorpio is connected to K2, Aquarius is connected to Rahu, and it tends, tends to kind of take away things. Um, so you, you don't want um, your Rashi Lord in Aquarius or Scorpio in the Varga charts. Um, if you have it connected to Taurus or Libra, it brings material well connected to that Varga. So you can tell a lot by sign placement. Uh, Pisces is going to bring blessings of Saraswati. Um, Capricorn brings hard work. I, um, this is in my books. Um, I, I put it in the slideshow, which I'll send to people if they want to see it. These are all the the Shaktis of the signs. Um, Aries is connected, connected with creativity. Taurus with material wealth. Gemini needs to be creative, or it get, and it can, otherwise that creative energy goes into sexuality and gets us into trouble. Um, Cancer has the Shakti and the blessings of, of Gauri and Mother Divine, um, and, and it shows um, blessings of women when you have a have have that showing up in a Varga chart. Um, blessings of the mother, blessing women become good luck things for you. So cancer is a very auspicious sign in the bargain chart. Leo is connected to Lord Shiva, and it brings um, our hidden talents out. Virgo causes problems. Virgo is the natural sixth house of the zodiac. Sixth house is about discipline and regular work and health to prevent illness. And whenever we have Virgo in a bargain chart, um, it, it causes challenges. We tend to kind of beat ourselves up, be self, too self-deprecative. And and um, 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 be too perfectionistic. So you know you have to remember to translate these the signs that the ascendant lord goes in the Varga chart into more meaningful information. Uh, Libra brings material blessings of Lakshmi, so it it, it can be very powerful um, for artistic creativity and sexual energy. Also, Scorpio, I said, brings deep karmic suffering from the past. Sagittarius is about learning. Um, Dharma and learning, um, uh, getting it's all Dharma. Uh, Sagittarius is the you know, is the is the fundamentalist sign of the zodiac where religious dogma can take over. When we get religious terrorists, sometimes they have an afflicted Sagittarius or an afflicted Jupiter in the chart because when Jupiter gets afflicted and Sagittarius gets afflicted, people get too dogmatic and stuck in, in you know, this, this is the only way. 
Um, and so the curse of Sagittarius is that it, it gets too fundamentalistic, but it also is, it's the one sign of the zodiac that's connected to war. It's the one, you know, uh, uh, the, the symbol of Sagittarius is, you know, is the archer. And so the U.S. being a Sagittarius run country is very connected to um, being very mil militaristic um, by nature because Sagittarius likes to push its fundamental values, in this case, U.S. democracy, impose it on the rest of the world with mil military interventionism. Very kind of powerful. Um, so Sagittarius can, can, you know, it's still a Jupiter sign. To me, it has this kind of real kind of doshic problem with it. Capricorn is always about hard work. Um, just remember where we see Capricorn is about hard work and it's pain and suffering because we have to work really hard. It's, it's one of the more difficult uh, signs. Um, Aquarius, again, has a lot of deep karma with it um, because it's connected to Rahu and the seat of desire and Rahu gives and it takes away. And uh, Aquarius is opposite from Leo and Leo is the giver of light. The sun gives light and Aquarius is the darkness and it takes it away. And so there's always kind of more pain and suffering in Aquarius. Um, and yet, um, you know, Aquarians, you know, if they get through their suffering, they become great humanitarian be beings and, and very deep devotees. But it's a lot of deep suffering always connected with Aquarius. Pisces is connected to Kadasaraswati, wisdom, wisdom and knowledge. You, very, you want to have Pisces in, um, in a Varga chart. Now, my, um, um, uh, because it, it, it's, it, it's connected to, um, you know, Jupiter and, and the wisdom of, of knowledge. Um, so just, um, you can reread that article. It's in both of my books. Um, 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 and, and I just wanted to go over it again because whenever you're looking at signs in a Varga chart, you kind of want to remember these kind of key, memorize these key words because Sagittarius, belief in dogma, Dharma, you know, Scorpio, deep suffering from the past connected to K2, you know, you know, um, you just, you know, cancer connected to the blessings of the mother and blessings of women, um, you know, be, you know, so you want to kind of remember the, the Shakti of the science because it gives you more information about how it will manifest. Um, now, there, whenever, in, in general, in a Varga chart, you don't want certain planets together. You don't like sun and moon together because uh, sun and moon is, is like a new moon. And whenever you meet people with a new moon, they, they're kind of emotionally dry and, and they kind of often lack confidence. So new moons, people born with new moons are often have very difficult lives. Um, because, um, and if you talk to them, you know, both usually their mother and their father were not there for them. And depending on the dignity, you know, uh, there are exceptions, you know, certainly Aries or Taurus will, will new moons are going to be a whole lot better, but there's always a lot of suffering with new moons and you want, you don't want new moons. Sun conjunct moon in a Varga chart. You don't want Sun conjunct Rahu in a Varga chart anywhere because it's eclipse fame, fear of failure, lack of appreciation around success. Um, so those those are kind of energies that manifest. You don't want moon conjunct Mars in, in a chart. Now, um, traditionally, this is related to celibacy. Um, um, on an emotional level, it's connected to charged emotions, emotional disturbances. Uh, Mars conjunct K2 is is also a difficult combination in, in, in the Varga chart, ancestral anger and violence from past lives, frustration in expressing power, past life sibling karma. So you, 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 these are things that you kind of want to watch for. Um, other unfavorable conjunctions in Varga charts, Mars and Rahu, inclination towards sexual passion, violence, power, hunger, and achievement. Um, Mars and Rahu are never a good combination. You don't want them in your Varga charts conjunct. Mercury and Rahu together, um, Mercury and Rahu are kind of friends, you know, um, um, they do actually get along together um, um, because Rahu is, uh, is responds in, in, to Mercury and creates sharp intellectual energy. So that's the positive of it. But when, if there's any affliction to it by Saturn or other planets, um, other malefics like Mars, it can create deep pho phobias and nervous disorders. Uh, Jupiter and Rahu. A kind of a difficult thing to have together in a Varga chart. They create death-like experiences, spoiling of tradition and religious and spiritual experience. Um, you know, Rahu. Um, um, you know, in today's world, people we like mavericks. We like people who, you know, leave their traditional uh, spiritual, religious uh, orientation. You know, 
In India, obviously, this is like the worst thing that can happen because people are very devout Hindus. And when their children have Jupiter conjunct Rahu in the chart and they go off and to find some new level of spirituality, the parents are devastated. But in modern society in the West, this is not as much a problem. Um, but um, it, it, it's, it's still kind of a, a problem to create rebellion against father, too. Um, Venus and Mars together, um, you know, is a kind of a problem, an uh, unfavorable conjunction in a, in a Varga chart. It either creates too much sexual passion, and when you have too much sexual passion, it usually gets out of control, and there's an energetic loss of vitality. Again, we've talked about the ideal Martian character when he's in his full power as a good soldier. He needs he needs to keep his pants up in order to have his energy to fight and win in battle. If he gets lost at the brothels overnight, he's gonna he's gonna lose his prowess and maybe fall in battle. So that's why Mars and Venus are sometimes a problem together. In modern society, you know, we don't Mars does not have to go into battle that much. And so so he can enjoy his sexual dalliance. And so I think in modern society it's not as much a problem. Um, Saturn and Rahu together in a, in, in a Varga chart, double suffering and disease, striving towards asceticism. It's it's um, you know, Saturn and Mar, Mar, Rahu are always kind of a problematic um, energy. Um, you know, it, uh, Rahu is phobias, and Saturn can can accentuate fear. And Saturn and Rahu together just create way too much anxiety in, in a Varga chart. Saturn and Ketu together, um, conflict between practical work and spiritual escapism and also somehow is connected to death. Saturn K2, um we've got Saturn K2 in I've got a whole article in the Almanac about Saturn K2. It's a huge event this this year between March and um in the in you know in transit this year. Um so here's our dignity cookbook. Um we want to look for dignity in the Vargas. Um and um so again, a simple way to do that, if you have the software, you can just go, um, you know, and, and look at, at dignity. And, 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 you know, Parashara actually gave us all kinds of ways to score this. And to me, the scores don't, uh, I didn't, I don't ever teach this because, you know, it, it doesn't help you when you're doing microscopic analysis. It, it's thought of if you have a high score, um, like I, I, you know, my moon is very weak. Um, it's got an 8.97, which is low. My Venus is actually very strong in all the Varga charts. It's got 13.50. And if you look at my Venus, um, Rashi chart, great friend, uh, Hora chart, enemy, doesn't matter in the Hora. Tor, uh, Drek in the chart, own sign. Um, Pisces, exalted in the, the Shamsha chart. The career, parents, great enemies chart there. Um, uh, Vimshamsha, Vimshamsha for, for spirituality. I showed you that in the first house in its own, uh, Taurus in its own sign. Siddhartha chart for education, um, own sign, Libra. Uh, Pisces exalted in the Trimshamsha chart. So, uh, I get a high score here when, when you go through all, all, of, all the Varga charts. And there are people who like to look at these high scores and they, and they graph them and, and, um, you know, you can see the graph here. So my Venus has a, a 13.5, so I gave it a 14. My Saturn has a high score. My Moon, Mercury, and Jupiter have lower scores. People who like to say, you've got, you know, this this makes the planet overall more powerful. I I personally think you have to kind of break it down because if you're looking at at um, children or something um, in my Septumcha chart. And I've got a debilitated moon here, and I've got a debilitated Mercury here, and I've got a debilitated Saturn here. You know, there's three, you know, they're kind of three strikes against um, children just because I've got three debilitated planets here. So um, it doesn't matter if the overall score is good, and my son has, has a good score, but, but you know, it, it, how it affects an individual Varga is going to be different. Um, um, so when you're looking your dignity cookbook, look for exalted own sign, Bula Chukuna, neutral enemy debilitation. You can do this quickly in the tables. Um, I'm, I, I don't want to go over this in too much detail because I want to get to some of the other things that are more interesting. But 
Um, for my students, I will send the slides, and, and here's how you evaluate what it means um, in a Varga chart. Um, um, so you can analyze dignity in the, in the Darga chart, and we went through how to do that quickly. Um, so the second point is um, you can analyze all the house lords from the Rashi chart in the divisional charts. So, um, um, so look at the D. So if you want to look at the, um, um, uh, if you want to look at any house, let's say we look at the fourth house. Um, so you know we we could go. We always uh, we learned in our in our five or six lessons on Navamsha that the Navamsha chart is really important. So you always go from the D1 to the Navamsha chart to see is there dignity in the Navamsha chart. And and we always we always look at that. We learned that already, and that's kind of a review. But you can also um, we also have to remember what we learned about Baba Suchika, which is house transposition, which means we always have to um, to kind of judge whether something's going to manifest in the Dasha period. We have to see how it moves. Um, we don't like transpositions that are three, six, eight, or twelve. Again, that's, this is a review of lesson three for my Barker one students. And for those of you who are not watching the tape, we should just look at the, I'll just show you an example of this. Um, okay, so um, actually I'm gonna go to North India. So here's the South India chart. Um, here's the D9 chart. So um, my, uh, I mentioned before my Jupiter period, I have Jupiter and Gemini here. It's in the eighth house, it's not a great placement. Uh, my Rahu Jupiter period was actually kind of pretty difficult in, in many ways. Um, and um, it was not that long ago. And I do remember it pretty well. And um, if if I were studying my this Babasuchika principle, um, so Rahu and Jupiter are seven houses away, which is is not... A horrible placement you know we, we like sevens they're okay to suggest partnerships or or things like that but in the Navamsha chart Jupiter goes from Gemini to Taurus here so it moves 12 houses so anytime you get a Baba Suchika transposition of 12 it means either you need to be involved in seva or service and charity work which I ended up doing during that period or you you feel a lot of frustration um, in moving forward, and and you know, twelve houses is always like delays and obstacles and frustrations and losses and expenditures, and and during my um, uh, my Rahu Jupiter period, I um, I had some surgery um, connected to Rahu in the second house. I had a had a tumor in my neck, and um, I, I just and I just moved. Uh, from Sedona back to Iowa, and I didn't have a solid office. And it seemed like that whole Rahu Jupiter period was very frustrating in just trying to get out of the house and trying to move forward with my health, trying to move forward with my business. And it, you can kind of see it in, in the Baba Suchika, Rahu and Jupiter are 12 houses apart in the Navamsha chart here. Um, the, the, the Baba Suchika moves from um, moves 12 houses from um from gemini to taurus you know so whenever you're evaluating a dasha period you know, if i were just looking at the rashi chart and say oh rahu jupiter there's a seven relationship things should go well but it wasn't it wasn't an easy period because the baba suchika and the d9 chart was not there so we said always look at that it's very important for judging success of a dasha um So when we're looking at um, any house in the D1 chart, so let's say we're looking at siblings or relationship with brothers, we always have to go to the D3 chart, the direct net chart. So um, um, I will continue when I teach um, the Vorgas um, this, in this class to give you supplemental material on the houses. Because if you don't understand the house well, you're not going to be able, you know, the information that you get from the Vorga chart is is not going to be as as useful but so you have to understand 
you know, that house really well and, and the placements of that house. So uh, I, I, I lost this chart. I had it up and, and I, I was going to show it to you. But here's an example um, of what we're talking about. So, um, so let's say you've got, you know, and this is true in my chart. Um, I've got lower the, I've got lower the, I've got uh, lower the ten and the fifth. But um, uh, my, my Rashi chart um, is, um, you know, when you look at when you look at it for children, we we did this last week in my in my class okay so you look at the uh i'm a male so we're looking at the fifth house we've got um which is owned by jupiter now jupiter is in the eighth house which is not so good and it's conjunctive malefic so right away we're not thinking this is a great chart for children jupiter in um in um the Karka for children is also in the eighth house it doesn't look good for children we look at the d7 chart for children um jupiter is conjunct two malefics, Rahu and the Sun. Karka is not doing well. The fifth house in, in, in the, um, um, for children is Gemini. Mercury is in the first in, in Aquarius, which is a karmic sign. So when we analyze it in detail, it's it's just it's not really great for children. I wanted children, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. You know, the karma is is definitely there. I, my wife and I. I got married late and, and we couldn't have children we thought about adopting um but you know the the, the um there's currently no children here um in another chart that i was looking at you know you, you have the fifth lord is in the tenth which is a good placement but when we go to the d9 chart um jupiter is debilitated in capricorn and it's in the seven it's in the um um there's a market corner Castana influence. Um, I don't have that example. I'm, I, I'm sorry to, to, to talk about something I don't have a chart up for. But in any case, um, there's so many things we have to look at when we're evaluating um, these these charts. And, and, and next, we're going to try to put together a definitive cookbook so we can kind of practice going back and forth from Rashi chart to Varga chart to get real practice with that. Um, so in the in the D9 chart we learned we don't want debilitation in the D9 chart because it, it's a it's an indication of bad luck and good fortune. It brings that planet down, that karaka down. So uh, Jupiter debilitated in the D9 chart may cause problems with children. Um, Mercury debilitated in the D9 may create problems with uncles or relatives, which is the karaka. Sun debilitated in the D9 may create problems with the father. Moon debilitated in the D9 may create problems with the mother. We don't want debilitated planets in the D9. They, they, they bring down the fortune of the Karka involved. Um, we talked about this a couple times already. We always want to go back and forth between the Rashi and the Varga chart. So um, if we're looking at mother, we're looking at the fourth house, we're looking at the moon, we're looking at uh what's going on in the d12 house um um for parents and and um if there's some affliction um to the moon and to the 12th floor in the d in the, in the d10 then we're kind of in trouble now i'll show you um i i did have um uh, my mother was had a very difficult life um some sometimes you're actually looking at the parents' karma in the in the D chart, and the relationship may be different. We'll have to look at parental. We did a little bit with parental parent parental children relationships. We'll have to do it again from a different perspective. But let's look at my um, D twelve here. Uh, so um, here 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 um. Here's my. Um, we said we could look at either Moon or Mars here um, in the D12. Now, if we were looking at the Moon, the Moon's here in the eighth house with K2 and Saturn. It seems like the Karaka for Mother, you know, had deep, deep karmic suffering, which my mom did. She had a very kind of difficult life. Her parents left. Um, she was kind of not abandoned by her parents, but she was basically she was raised by her grandparents from the age of two, and she didn't see her 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 parents again until she was about 12 and 16. So she had a very kind of difficult life here. So if we're looking at the moon uh, here, we're in trouble. If we're looking at my, um, um, if 
looking at more if we're looking at mercury which is um in, in the fourth house my chart is debilitating in junk rahu in the sun here if we're looking at um the fourth lower it's saturn or rahu in, in this case probably saturn um uh, uh, or Rahu, we can just see this. There's a lot of difficult karma for my mother here. If anything, because we have Mars and Scorpio here, the second indicator for mother here in in this chart. My mom, um, my mom, you know, was tough, and she kind of got through stuff. She worked really hard all her life, and um, um, uh, and but she had a very kind of deep karmically suffering life, even if we use Mars as the car here. So. Um, we always may go back and forth between the two charts, and we'll have to practice that when we get to parents. Um, so uh, we went, uh, the, the other thing that we can look at in all the Varga charts is that we can look at the sun and the moon and the Atmakorica. So one of the reasons I put together this lesson because, and I'm open it to the public, because it's, there's simple things you can do with it. You can look at your Ascendant Lord, in all the Vargage cards to see where it shines and where it doesn't shine. And you can look at the sun and the moon and the Atmakarka in all the Vargage charts. So the sun rules the soul and the sun will show the influence of different areas of life and our destiny, fortune, and wealth and resources and profession and status. So um, the sun in the um, in, in the Vargage charts is very important. Um, so if you have sun exalted in the D7, when you have a child, it may increase your wealth and status in the world and that happens to people sometimes suddenly you know they're nobody and they have a kid and, and their boss gives them a raise at work because they had a kid and, and everything goes right so you can kind of pull up um you know for those of you who have sri jody star or you can have to run your own program um you can um look at your son in this is my chart you can look at the sun in all the varga charts Again, uh, my score is very good. It's 12. Um, and so you see in the Rashi chart, sun's in, 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 in a great friend sign. In the Hora chart, it's in a friend sign. It doesn't mean anything in the Hora chart. Um, Drekina, it's in a great friend sign. Uh, D4 chart for property, it's neutral in Pisces. Subtumcha, it's for children. It's an enemy sign of children. The Vamsha, it's in Cancer, it's a neutral sign. Uh, Dishamsha, um, it's in Scorpio, um, which is a great friend sign. Um, for parents, it's in Pisces. So you, we just look at the sun um, in, in, in all the Varga charts. And actually, my sun is very strong in all the Varga charts, with the exception of maybe um, the D27 chart um, here and the. Um, um, the uh, the D45 chart, which is connected with my father, and so his father obviously had a lot of suffering. But um, what we can see here, um, the point that I want to make make to you is that you can study the sun and all the Varga charts, and it will show you something about status, influence, um, and fortune um, in that in that area. And you want you want a strong sun in a lot of your Varga charts because it will uplift that area of the Varga. Um, now, it turns out if the sun's debilitated in the D10, it's one of these exceptions. Um, and, and don't ask me why. There's always these funny exceptions. But if you see a debilitated sun in the D10, it's actually a good thing. I, I, I kind of think those people end up working harder, sometimes debilitated planets, um, um, because they feel a lack of confidence with the debilitated. So maybe they work harder and they get ahead more. So sometimes we'll learn that um, in the transit class about debilitated planets. So sometimes your debilitated planets become your best friend because you work three times as hard to overcome the problems of them. Um, so you don't want to see sun in a Scorpio or Aquarius in a Varga chart. Again, it suggests pain and loss and cruelty. Um, if you're Leo rising or Sag rising, then then you absolutely have to look at the sun in all the Varvic charts. It becomes very, very important because it's the chart lord and and it's the ninth house lord for Sag rising. So um, uh, so Afi, you've got Sag rising. So definitely look at the sun in all your Varga charts. Um, and we look we looked at the exception. Um, now this was interesting. Um, I, I, this is kind of a little bit of a side note, and I, and I pulled it together because I was just thinking about it. Um, 
you know, when we when we have debilitated planets, there's there, there are remedies for them, and and sometimes the remedies are the are basically the remedy is the chlorica of the of the house that debilitates them. So if you have a weak sun, if you have sun in Libra, now this could also be in a Varga chart, so this is why I put it in here. If you have sun in Libra in any Varga chart, it, it can be compensated by a strong Venus. So if you get married, um, um, your weak sun in a Varga chart can be pulled up. And I actually have a friend who's got a debilitated sun in the 12th, and, and he did get married, and you could just see how his whole energy got lifted and he became a different person when he got married it totally lifted that debilitated sun out of of a very difficult placement in libra and in the 12th house um saturn conjunct the sun um in libra and i normally you think that's a horrible combination because it creates fighting with bosses and and just drains from work but 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 saturn and libra is always about very very hard work and so it can pull um a debilitated sun um up and 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 prevent him from perishing um debilitated moon you know moon is debilitated in scorpio so mars is the sign of scorpio or k2 and so uh, so a, a a brother can pull a debilitated moon out i think that was i have a debilitated moon and i think i really leaned on my older brother very heavily when i was growing up to kind of give me the confidence to pull me out of of this deep emotional funk that I was in when I was a child. Um, so sometimes you have to recommend that people with a debilitated moon get in touch with their brothers and their siblings and make peace with them to kind of pull them out of that debilitation. Morris gets debilitated in cancer, so they need to reconnect with their mother, but it's a very hard to, thing to do because naturally they're gonna be angry toward their mother. They need, they need to kind of heal their relationship with their mother to pull the Mars out of debilitation. Mercury debilitated is in Pisces, owned by Jupiter, so it needs a strong Jupiter um, um, figure to pull them out. So they need a guru or they need children to pull them out. So I've got a client with um, a debilitated Mercury in Pisces. It's the Ascendant Lord. He's Virgo rising. And, and it's a very difficult, it's right about 15 or 16 degrees. It's a very kind of difficult chore. And he doesn't have a guru, and his children somehow keep him going. But you can see how, um, you know, you, 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 you know, the recommendation for somebody with a, a debilitated mercury like that would be you need to get a guru to pull you out of that energy. Um, Jupiter debilitation is in, occurs in, in Capricorn, right, which is owned by Saturn. So we need an elder, a mentor, or a father. Saturn is, again, another character for father. Um, to 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 pull us out of that debil that 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 problem energy. Uh, Venus deb gets debilitated in Virgo, which is owned by Mercury. Mercury, the carpet is friends. So we need friends to kind of pull us out of our relationship issues, or relatives to kind of be there to support us when we're having relationship issues, which is kind of the natural things that happen, and that pulls the Venus out of debilitation. And Saturn is debilitated in Aries, so it needs Mars. It needs a brother figure or a, a, a military figure or a military mentor uh, or a leader um, to kind of pull them out of their 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 uh, funk. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to, um, I've been talking a lot and I, I still have more material to cover. Some, uh, for those of you who know me, I, I do go through a lot of examples in our classes. I go over students' charts, and, but the first class, I always have a lot of expositional material to present and, and it's hard for me to do too many examples, otherwise I never get through the expositional material. But I will take a question, Julie has a question, um, I'm going to unmute you. Julie, um, hi, Julie, you had a question. Oh, yes, I had a lot of comments and questions. I think, let's see, the last one that came up, something just came up right now when you were talking about Mars debilitated in cancer needs a strong moon or mother to pull it up. Uh, you said something last week at the end of the class that I had a different interpretation of in a person's chart where she has in the D9 a debilitated Mars that was exchanging with um, in the second house 
that was exchanging with the moon in Aries in the 11th house. And I thought that was good. It is and good. It is good. Uh, you, you had said something last week, though, that this um, kind of exchange, I believe, uh, was not good. So I had a question that it prompted it when you were talking about Mars debilitation just now, because I thought that was fabulous. And she's in uh, Mars moon right now, and I'm predicting good things for her. And I thought, oh, my God, I need to talk to Barry because no. you said something bad about it. And I thought this is going to be good for her with money and, and actually – it's the DK, the moon, that she's running the sub period of, which only comes around once in a blue moon, you might say. And it is, I think it's good for her to meet somebody and, you know, somebody financial and uh, she's already well off, I mean, well off, you know, for, from the family uh, financially. So I think it's a good period. But um, so I, that was one thing. Yeah, I actually agree with you, Julie. I mean, what, I, and again, sometimes there's so much going on in these classes. I may have missed that. A, a Parivartana yoga between the second and the eleventh um, yeah. is is generally good. But don't forget, the second and the eleventh are the eleventh is kind of the six from the six, so it's a health house, and and the second house is is a marka house. So second and eleventh exchanges. If, if you pull up Alan Anand's book, uh, Parivartana Yogas. You know, it, it, it's a little bit of a neutral. And then if the planets are have have some loss of dignity, then you don't you don't get the full result of that exchange, you know. So I didn't know um, you wrote that, a book, uh, Ellen Anand, I, uh, uh, on, on Parivartana Yoga. So he was in my class with Hart Defoe. How interesting. Yeah, uh, uh, Alan, Alan has been quite a writer, and he's actually quite a brilliant man. Um, yes, he sent me for my birthday. He sent me one of his mystery books, but I didn't know he did a book like that. So thank you for that. Um, he, he just yeah. wrote a book on Kalasarpa Yoga, which I haven't bought yet, and he looked at 300 charts oh, of Kalasarpa Yoga. So, um, yeah, Alan has done a lot of case studies with Parvartna Yogas. Um, and I, I would just, I would go there, but I, you know, to, in, in general, um, you know, we, I, I haven't been teaching yogas because I, I think they're so problematic and they don't, um, they get over and misinterpreted. But uh, in general with yogas, you, you, you know, if the planets lack dignity or have bad aspects, then the yoga may not fully ask manifest. Or if it does manifest. For that reminder, Barry, because the person, the person I'm, Whose chart I've been looking at for over a year is um, is experiencing uh, some weakness. But I I went to Ashtaka Varga, and she does have a weak uh, Ashtaka Varga for mo most of the Mars. It never gets above four, which is her Dasha Lord, and um, and and it has often asked me you know about about health and feeling you know kind of run down and weak. So uh, your comments of the eleventh house. As being a health house, is it the 11th Lord or the 11th house? Uh, can you say more about what you just said about the 11th house? Well, um, yeah, the 11th house, can, you know, so, sometimes if, if you pick up my class on Secret of the Houses but or read my articles, the 11th house, um, you know, sometimes gets wonderfully thrown into this kind of place of, um, of, um, oh, it's the house of gains. Everything's always wonderful in the eleventh house. Right. But 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 you know it, it, that's you know that that's kind of like um, that, that's kind of like grade school jokes because nothing's ever like that. You know um, the the eleventh house is the six from the six. So so when you're looking at health problems, you you actually have to look at the six and the eleventh and the. The eleventh house lord has is kind of a little bit like the sixth house lord. It can cause health problems. Mm -hmm. um, so you 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 have to kind of lump the eleventh and the sixth houses together in the same category, and all the things that we have to do for the eleventh house, and the, for the sixth house, which is discipline, and and you know uh, you know showing showing up and being disciplined, you know, are often applied to the eleventh house also because of that six from the six. Yeah. Yes, thank you, uh, Barry. And I just wanted to say that in your your chart, your example, when you were talking about Jupiter Rahu, yes, we did see uh, the difference with the Jupiter. But I noticed that 
in your main chart and in your D9, the Rahu went seven away. So I thought, well, maybe that's really not not that bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it's in, in, in the, that, that's what I was just pointing out to you. Um, we, we tend, you know, when we learn basic Jyotishish, we have to learn. We learn some basic rules. You, how far are the Dasha Lord, you know, and the Bhukti Lord from each other in the in the D1 chart, and you know, if it's not three six nine or twelve, or three six eight or twelve, then you know, we say, okay, it's going to be a good period. But then you have to qualify in the Navamsha chart with with the principles that we learned in lesson three about Bhava Suchika. And, right. and the more I study that Bhava Suchika stuff and start looking at it, it's everything. You know, it's everything. And the example that we used in in our in our class, in our third class, you know, was this. There's this multi-billionaire who, who in the auto industry, and if you look at his, you know, his Varga chart, you know, it's a 12th house period, um, you know, and, and, and there's no way you would have predicted that he was going to become a multi-millionaire or multi-billionaire during this period. And then when you look at the Baba Suchika, it, it transposes five houses, and then you look at the Varga charts, and it's like, wow. So... You know, you maybe he's making the cars overseas. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think he was. It was it was yeah. an Indian it was an Indian um, auto magnet. Um, and and I've got the chart. If you want to review lesson three, um, and look at the slideshow. But I, I think it's just an incredible example of of why we have to use Baba Suchika um, in in look, trying to decide if something's going to be good or bad. You know. Um, um, uh, and that's why there's so many advanced rules in Jyotish, you know, to get really good predictions, you have to look at so many things. Anyway, great questions, Julie. I've got two more questions One here. One more thing, Mary. Uh, on the child chart, whose chart you didn't have, I wondered in that example, and maybe this is obvious, but you've made uh, two opposing statements that I won't nitpick about, but... <laughs> but I wondered in the child chart if it allowed for the children or not when it was debilitated in the in the in the sub chart when it was you know good in the main chart. Well, that, that was that's that's the whole point is that sometimes things are promised in the Rashi chart, and if you look people who don't look at the at, at the Varga charts and they say, oh, this looks great for children, you know, and then if you know, and then you look at all these other factors. In 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 the uh, you know in in the D charts like I, I think in the chart which again I somehow lost um, um, Jupiter was also I was um, was the Karaka was debilitated in Capricorn that was one thing and then the Lord of the fifth house um, was um, was Jupiter and it uh, Lord of the, the fifth house was um, Marna Karakastana, you know, there were just, there were a bunch of other offsetting things for it. So yeah. um, I'll have to dig up that chart. Um, I, I don't have it at the moment. I, I do want to, we have a guest, Sandeep has a question. And I wanted to ask, answer his question. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Um, Sandeep, I, I just said, I'm sorry. Thank you for your question. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Barry, for allowing me. Well, actually, I have like five questions. Uh, I don't know if you would allow me uh, to ask them, but uh, do you want me to run all the questions at once or ask you one after another? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try because, because I want to get through some other material. I'll take, I'll take one question. You can email the other questions to me, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, okay, so you were discussing about uh, how, let's say, for example, Saturn is in Aries, let's say, in a Varga chart, and a Mars person can take them out. I was wondering how it is about a planet which is in Marana Karakasana. So let's say Venus is completely smashed in, let's say, 6,000 in a particular D chart. Uh, what would be the scenario in this case to take the Venus out of that and the ill effects of that? That is the first question, actually. Yeah, that's that's a um, that's that's a, that's a good question. I'm not sure how much it relates to this talk, but um, 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 I, I, you know, usually remedies for Mark Marna Karakastana placements, you have to go to the Karaka, and then you have to strengthen the Karaka. So uh, uh, the Karaka for the sixth house is Mars or Saturn, and and, and basically um, Venus in the sixth house kind of um, you know, uh, it's going to have problems with, you know, the sixth house is always about discipline. 
And 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 if you don't have any dis discipline about about your sexuality, then you get kind of you get sick a lot. And 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 so um, usually the remedy for a mark a kind of stunted planet is going to be the carca of the of the of the um, of the um, uh, of the house involved in this case would be Mars or Saturn, and, and both of those Mars always teach Mar, both of those always teach us discipline. So so usually um, Venus in the sixth house usually has to kind of have um, discipline around sexual activity or sensual activity, otherwise it's not going to kind of get sick. Okay. Okay. Does that, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does to an extent. Uh, if if I can just, uh, but for now this this suffices. Uh, the second question I wanted to ask: You mentioned a malefic planet in the ascendant of a D chart would, let's say, hamper that chart. But what about if a malefic is exalted? So let's say in a D10 chart, Rahu is exalted in, uh, let's say, Gemini. So how or Saturn in Libra in any D10 chart or any Varga charts? How okay, do you think that will happen? Yeah, good, good question. I did have that in my notes, and I, I probably didn't go over it. Yes, if if a planet is in its own sign or exalted, it it won't be a problem. It won't be a problem. So obviously, if you have Saturn exalted um, in Libra in in the in the first house of any D chart, then then it's it's not going to cause it's not going to cause those the kind of problems you would have if you had just a a, a regular malefic in there. Okay. And so on, on sign and 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 um, exalted always kind of take to, you know will, will take precedence over a, a, a problematic malefic influence. Good question. Okay. Okay. Thank thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you. I, I, I personally I've got other people in the class, but I will t if you email the other email me the other questions, I will answer them. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Mohini, you had a question. I see. Uh, you can you can you can unmute yourself, Mohini. Thank you. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Barry. That's really uh, you know interesting uh, re remedial information you've given there today. So I appreciate that. Just wanted to ask you really quickly. I guess it's kind of like Sandeep's question: Is uh, if the Lord is of a malefic house, do you still appropriate in that way? Do you know what I mean? So no, I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, um, yeah. So I guess it's just tangentially in reference yeah, to what he. The thing is, you have to remember with malefics. Um, sometimes they get bad press. You know, if you listened to my tape yesterday on, um, my transit class yesterday. Um, you know, malefics to me are kind of like difficult high school coaches that are kind of like pushing you really hard to be a better person. They create problems. <laughs> And they're not a lot of fun, but ultimately they do create something good. So, I I, I think in general we have to remember that malefics, um, you know, we shouldn't use think of things as good or bad. I mean, they're you know you know maybe un malefics are un uncomfortable to go through their energies, but they ultimately will are, are pushing you to be a better person. Um, you know, even in extreme situations where they cause accidents and and illness is because you need to wake up about some area of your life that you're not looking at For so sure. yeah so i don't know if that answers you but i i think the it, question that, is uh, that was the part a but a very quick part b do you think that uh, for example would you use that methodology to prescribe gems to a client um you know um my, my remedy class has a whole two-hour lesson on gems, and there are all these kind of complicated rules about prescribing gems. I, I don't, right. I don't like, I don't like prescribing gems for malefic house ownerships ever. I only, okay. I only like prescribing gems for, um, um, yeah. the first, you know, for 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 yoga karaka planets and and for um, uh, you know, the lords of the first, um. You know, fifth yeah. of the ninth houses, and then there's still all these funny qualifications. I mean, yeah. um, um, I, I, and I tend to use gem elixirs because gems are too expensive. I, yeah, 
because you know sometimes you, you stumble across somebody who's like into their bling right so you're like okay well then you know you're trying to figure out what kind of jam or what kind of you know what jewel will work for them right and so yeah i just thought i'd ask real quick on that but thank you that was excellent yeah yeah my my, my basic role with gem therapy is if if the ascendant lord is debilitated uh like let's say you have mercury you have a virgo rising chart and they've got mercury in pisces then there's a there's a constant problem all their life about with health issues and mental clarity issues and right. mental stability issues then absolutely give them an emerald because you want to you know you always want to strengthen the first lord um the debilitated first lord i always want to give a gem because it's a long-term influence um sure. but that that's just my preference okay yeah thank you thank you okay so i'm going to continue with um the lecture um we've got about 15 minutes left so we looked about we talked about the sun um So we also want to look at the moon and the divisional charts. And again, the sun and the moon are just the two most important planets, you know, for everything. And and we forget that so often. I don't I don't know how that ever happened, but but you know, that's why you know if you if you went to some of my other classes, we have a whole lesson on sun charts and we have a whole lesson on moon charts, because you know they're you know they're they're you know they're the basis of everything. Um, and and we forget them. So the moon chart, the moon in the divisional chart is is very important. Something we haven't talked about in in Bargo one, but we need to start looking at it. Um, so for example, a debilitated moon in the D nine chart may ruin a person's life, and there'll be no marriage. I mean, that's how important it is. You don't want debilitated moons in the Varga charts because they they, you know, either we have to work three times as hard to make something happen, or or you know, it just doesn't happen. So you know, debilitated moon is very important. In, in, in all the Varga charts, and, the, uh, and I gave an example there. We also want, don't want Moon in the eighth house. Don't, moon in the eighth house is Marka Karakastana. It, moon in the eighth house gets stuck. It can't express its emotions. It 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 it's uh, it gets way too kind of caught up in, in mental inward um, nonsense, and and it causes deep suffering. So you don't want Moon in the eighth house in any of the D charts because it causes huge suffering and lack of happiness in the chart. Um, you also don't want Moon in the 6th, 8th, or the 12th in any of the D charts or conjunct the Saturn. Uh, we generally don't like planets in the 6th or the 8th or the 12th house in Varga charts, but particularly Moon conjunct Saturn um, can be particularly problematic um, and can, can create dangers from enemies. Um, Moon in the eighth house in the D30, which when we study the D30, is particularly bad for disease and illness. Again, the eighth house is going to be. The sixth and the eighth houses are the key houses to look at in the D30 chart. And you, you want to make sure that the moon is not in the eighth house in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the D30, because otherwise you need to do serious remedial energies uh, for a moon period that would come up. Um, so bottom line, watch moon in Scorpio in divisional charts. We like moon in Libra, Taurus, Cancer, Pisces, Sagittarius. We, we don't like moon in Capricorn, Aries, Scorpio, Virgo. And Virgo is one of those funny signs of the zodiac um and when we if you if you if you review the points in the slideshow you know virgo is a, you know is way too perfectionistic it's a sixth house so it's always kind of causing you know pro potential health problems if we don't do things right and so uh, virgo is, is not a great place to have planets in general um again you don't want moon afflicted by malefics in, in bad houses um we also have to watch dispositors. I, um, one of my classes upcoming, we're gonna have to have a whole three or four hours on dispositors because we forget about them. Um, um, so if you, you know, let's say you get Moon in the fourth house in Aries, you know, so you think, oh, Digbala, um, you know, great placement. Um, but then you, you know, the dispositor Mars is in Cancer, and and you know, it's in it's it's in the eighth house, um, and so suddenly, you know, that that wonderful moon that looks so wonderful in the fourth house is is controlled by you know mars in in, in the eighth and cancer so you always have to remember the dispositors and that also applies to divisional charts you know if the dispositor is badly afflicted has bad dignity or in a bad house then it can't do a lot of good i i i 
you know, I'm teaching my my fundamental class on transits, and and you know, um, it's it's like landlords and tenants. If um, I always use this analogy, I started it when I was teach, first teaching Jojish. Um, you know, if you're renting a property, and um, you know, and the property is actually nice. You know, like it said, you've got dignity there. It's a nice property. But but the landlord is in the twelfth house, or and he's you know debilitated, you know he's in jail. He, he, he you know when you call him to to get something fixed, he doesn't answer. <laughs> you know? He can't control the property. So um, always remember your dispositors in that way with landlords and tenants, because you know if 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 the landlord is 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 not happy if he's in jail if he's being attacked by saturn and mars and k2 he's just not going to fix your house <laughs> um so moon charts and psychology um now um there are 16 types of of of, of the mind as suggested by the d16 chart and we'll um we'll go over that when we study the d16 chart and related to the tithis and the deities it's quite quite, quite fascinating um, uh, but the, the moon sign in any divisional chart will reveal the mental temperament toward that area of life. So again, remember your signs. Moon in Aquarius um, in the D9 chart may give a stern, cold, and philosophical attitude toward relationships. So again, moon is going to show emotional temperament. If it's in Aquarius in the D9 chart, translate that. Stern, cold, philosophical attitude toward relationships. Moon and Cancer in the D7 chart, caring and loving attitude toward children, right? D7 is about children. Moon and Cancer is nurturing and represents mother, mother divine. Wonderful placement. Moon and Aries in D10. Well, it's going to make you daring and impulsive in your in your profession. Again, you, Moon and Aries is going to be is is going to give you that courage to kind of move forward in your career. It's a good placement. So, you can look at the mental state of the Moon and the sign quality, and you can go back to my um, sign old cheat chart, and you can go back to my books um, to come up with keywords to kind of translate that. And there's infinite number of possibilities with this, but moon and psychology in the D chart is very much very important. Um, we talked about we don't like moon in the eighth house. We don't like moon conjunct K2 or Mars in the D charts. Too much sadness, moon and Saturn, sadness, happiness, bad health, um, things like that. So look at moon conjunctions in the D charts because they're going to create problems. You don't want moon conjunct malefics in the D charts. Um, Ashtak uh, Atmakarka, we want to end with Atmakarka today. Um, the um, Atmakarka, you know, is the planet with the highest number of degrees and it shows the karma of this incarnation and why we have to suffer in this life. And, and it shows the soul's deepest karma in any division. So the Atmakarka is very important in the Varga charts. And we have to look at it because it actually represents kind of the deep karmic suffering um, and purpose in this lifetime. And when it shows up um, in, in a Varga chart in a bad place, then it, it will kind of ruin that Varga and show the deep pain in that Varga. Um, so, for example, Saturn out Makorica is about um, not creating pain and suffering for others. But it's because we've gone through a lot of pain and suffering in our own life, we have... Uh, the strength to um, help others and, and we're able to accept other people's pain. Um, I know this firsthand because I have Saturn on Korka in the 12th. Um, <laughs> so the basic lessons of Korka, just to review them. Um, so if, if the sun has the highest um, number of degrees in your chart, then we have to learn humility and overcoming pride and self importance So put sun in... Um, in the D10 chart as the Apokorica put it in, let's say, the 12th house, you know, particularly a deep lesson about humility and service and overcoming pride and self-importance because you don't, you have to learn how to kind of work with your, uh, in, in management and not the little people. So you, you can see, you know, how, um, how the Apokorica son might function in the D10 chart, which is so connected to status and career. Moon at Makorica, the need to learn compassion and sensitivity for others, right? Um, and and um, uh, put that into maybe the D7 chart, Makorica for, for, for Moon, put it in the wrong house with, with bad dignity there, 
and, and you can see how the major lessons involving being a, a, a passionate, caring, uh, sensitive parent would manifest. Moore's Atma Parka needs to practice nonviolence, both verbally and physically. Usually, you know, it ends up being verbally that people have problems with it. Um, but you know, put it put it in the in the D three chart connected to uh, brothers and siblings, and and who naturally want to fight. You could see how you know put it in the wrong house there, connected to joint malefics or something, and you can have you, know, you can see have a major conflagration. Mercury Atmakarika is about speaking the truth and communicating only that which is uplifting to others. And so, you know, the media, the U.S. media now, which is all about tearing down people, is you know, most of them probably have <laughs> Mercury Atmakarika because they're doing the exact opposite of what they need to do. But you know, put put you know, think about that in a chart. Put it in 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 the in the wrong in in, in a bad place in the market chart. You can see how deep lessons come out about that. Jupiter at Macarca has to reserve, assume the role of protector and teacher, um, and usually these people have trouble teaching, and so um, you have to make sure that Jupiter at Macarca does teach. Venus at Macarca has to learn how to control physical passion, excessive sensual experience, and master relationships. You know. Definitely, if you have Venus at Macarca in the D9 chart, badly placed like in Virgo or in the 12th house, you can see how it's just like a major uh, accentu accentuation of the life lesson. Put that in a Venus period and you you know, you know, you see all kinds of problems happening. Saturn at Macarca, we went over. Rahu at Macarca has to learn how to, um, uh, you know, because they have the karma of cheating others in past lives, they have to kind of deal with uh, being deceived and cheated in this life, and 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 and, and being, um, they have to learn how to be honest and straightforward in everything they do. And in um, Rahu Avakarika can show up, you know, in you know, think of it in a D10 chart, and you can see how ethical business relationships are really important. Um, oh, we went over the examples here, um, so. The Atmakarika lessons, you know, show the, the, the suffering karma on the soul level, and it reveals our hidden weaknesses and flaws in this incarnation. So um, what people don't understand, you know, uh, we always talk about Atmakarika as king of the chart. It really, um, you know, um, the Atmakarika governs the first and the eighth houses. Um, so and the cell, it, it is the kind of the, the, it's the highest level of self in this incarnation. Um, and it, and it, but it involves the eighth house lessons from past lives that we need to learn, and and so we, you know, our whole our whole goal in this incarnation is kind of learning our Atmakarika lessons, and so when they manifest in the Varga charts, um, in a in a difficult place, we have to kind of realize that that Varga is going to particularly suffer and be a focal point for this incarnation. Um, um, so. You know, it's it's very interesting. It's like like Mars at Macarica, um You know, let's say you have Mars at Macarica debilitated in Cancer. Mar Mars at Macarica in general, kind of, um, uh, especially if it were like debilitated, shows a dislike for conflicts and suppressed anger and may lack ambition. And so it needs to work on all those things. I mean, you have to force these debilitated Mars at Macarica people to kind of like. Fight for their rights, protect their territory, you know, let go of their anger when they're suppressing it, and you know, get out there and be ambitious and make something happen. But it'll be really, really hard for them to do. Put put that debilitated Mars on Macarica in the D10 chart, you know, and you'll, you'll see that that you know, God, that is such a major lesson for them in this lifetime, and you have to advise them. So the yeah, Macarica is very, very, very revealing in the D charts, and we have to we'll have to look at all your examples. Um, you know, the Atmakarika teaches us that we mistake our Maya for the light of God that we truly are. So Atmakarika always gets us caught up in, in Maya and illusion. You know, we, we the son Atmakarika thinks, I'm a leader, I'm great, I'm, you know, I'm the best. And, and, and in reality, they need to learn how to kind of um, be humble and, and to lead by working with people and lead through example, I have a friend, it's the most amazing brilliant person I know, um, very, he used to work for me. He's got son Atma Kark in the ninth house, 
exalted in Aries. And he is the most difficult person in the world to work with. And he's way too proud. And, and he's got so much fire, he kind of burns everybody up. And and I is one of the few people I ever fired because he was just always standing up to me and showing how smart he was. And here's an example because he didn't know his Jotish that he actually needed to learn how to be humble and how to kind of like suppress his his incredible talent and his ego because he was burning people up and he still hasn't learned it. Um, so so that's the illusion of the Atmakorka. The soul gets trapped by the illusion of uh, exalted Sanatma Parka. I am great, you know, I am great. But in reality, you know, they have to learn how to be humble. Always look at the Atma Parka, particularly in the D9 and the D60, which we did in the last course. Um, we spent a lot of time on, on the Atma Parka and the D9 um, and then rotating it because there's, you know, that's where we have two, three videotapes on it because it's so, so important in the D60. We really should have spent more time looking at the Atma Parka. Um, so again, look at the Atmakarka and all that your divisional charts. What Vargas have weakness? In other words, does the Atmakarka get debilitated or afflicted in a particular Varga chart? Again, if it gets malefic, if it gets conjunct malefics, there's a lot of suffering in that area. Um, so my Saturn Atmakarka, um, if you look at my charts, my Saturn is my Atmakarka. Saturn um, is debilitated in my D7 chart, so I have no children. Uh, again, you know, maybe I've been deprived of children because maybe I didn't do a good job in the last lifetime, and that's what I think I understand. Um, or maybe I didn't want children because I wanted to develop my students or my children now. But um, um, but I have an exalted uh, Atma Kork in D20, D30, and D27. Um, and so um, I have to really think about interpreting that a little bit. Um, um, uh, and, 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 and maybe when we do those charts, we'll remember to look at that. But um, I, I do have thoughts on that, but I don't want to, it's late and I, I want to take final questions. So um, look at the summary points. And we're out of time here, and I want to honor people who came here. Um, uh, Julie, um, does any, um, I'm going to, I'll stay a few minutes later for additional questions. Um, I'll send you the full slideshow. Um, anybody who's watching the tape, version of the course. Um, I, I didn't get to the nodes. Um, you can read the notes on that. We'll see if we can maybe start with that next week. Uh, the nodes obviously are very important in in the Varga charts because if you put them in the one seven axis in any Varga chart, they're going to create deep karma around those areas. And in the upper Varga charts, Rahu and K2 get calculated to, in conjunction. It just means that there's a deep karmic um energy uh wherever they fall in a d chart and so that's you have to always look at rahu and k2 in the divisional charts um k2 in the d charts creates suffering and pain and cruelty um unless it's exalted um and um whatever so anyway for those of you um um who are watching this on tape um if you want to take my varga one class you can write me if you want to take Sections of my Varga 1 class, you're welcome to, they're split into sections now. One is on the Vamsha chart, one is on career in, in great, great detail. Um, there's about nine tapes on each of those with the um, additional tips that I, I gave out for, um, as part of the class. If you want to come join Varga 2 class, um, I, I can send you, I'll send you the first three tapes of, of the Varga 1 class to catch up with the basic principles of Varga. Um, you can watch one of those tapes on YouTube, um, and if you need help with payments, you can do that. So uh, I'm going to open up uh, the mic to any final questions. Um, again, I'm, uh, for those of you who have taken my classes, the first class always ends up being kind of a whirlwind of overview information. Uh, that's a little overwhelming. Um, and for those of you who have taken classes with me, we, we do spend a lot of time looking at your charts and going through examples and, and looking at celebrity charts. Next week, um, I think we're still going to do kind of an overview integration class of uh, doing case studies um, and uh, going over some more cookbook principles. Because I think we really have to get our deep principles down for looking at Vargas in general and be really clear on our cookbook for, from going from the D1 chart to a D chart. And, have, and, and then I think we need to practice that before we move forward with all these new D charts. So that's where we're at. Um,
So um, uh, I, for those of you uh, who are on Jyotish overload, I, I, I'm sorry for I talk so quickly. Um, and many of you have attracted a really great group of smart students. I know you can many of you can follow me, but for those of you who are not following me, I do apologize um, if I've gone too quickly. But um, you are welcome to uh, ask any questions. Um, some of you who came late, I, Victoria, I'm sorry, you did get muted. Um, Sundar, you did get muted. Um, uh, Sandeep is um, uh, um, just um, so everybody's unmuted. If you have a question, Danny, I'm sorry, you, did, you were muted the whole class. Um, so everybody can get on the mic and ask questions now, one at a time, if you need them. Okay, um, uh, Betty, uh, shall I shall I go ahead? If, if no one else has a question, yes, you can go ahead, please. Yes, uh, I wanted to know that you have mentioned earlier in the class that if the Rashi chart does not promise something, and if the D chart promises uh, something, so it will be like a promise. But I mean, what I'm basically trying to ask, let's say in the Rashi chart, a planet is in debility, and it is not promising something, and it is, let's say, blocked. But the same planet is in exalted form in the D chart, so let's say Navamsha. So isn't it going to cause a Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga? I mean, what I have learned uh, with my own study is that the Navamsha chart for all matters and purposes is if has a final say. So if a Navamsha chart is saying something, let's say about marriage, it is definitely going to happen, even if the uh, Rashi chart does not show it, which is quite opposite of what uh, you have said so far, if I'm uh, not wrong. That is the sure. first one. Uh, the second, which is a small one. Sorry? But let, let, let me answer that now while I, while I remember that one before we go yeah. on to the next question. So you, you, you're absolutely right. You know, in our in our lessons on the Nabonsha chart, we did, you know, there, there are always exceptions in Jyotish. Um, for the most part, um, you know, the Nabonsha chart can bring, bring results kind of, I think, later in life is what I've always talked about. That could particularly, and, and when people get married, sometimes um, when when people do get married, they become their Navamsha chart, and um, their the, the, the fruits and the positive things in that Navamsha chart do manifest. I think the Navamsha chart, the D60 and the D9 chart, are kind of exceptions to the general Varga rules because they they're kind of separate. They have separate kind of rules within themselves. But but you're absolutely right, Sandeep. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the second question was about the sign of Aquarius. Now, you also mentioned that Scorpio and Aquarius are quite karmic signs, but also Aquarius is a sign which does behave in a way like Cancer. So let's say Jupiter in a D chart in Aquarius can behave as an exalted Jupiter. Uh, any comments about that? Because one, on one hand, it would be behaving as an exalted Jupiter. On the other hand, there is this uh, karmic things associated for being in the sign of Aquarius. So, uh, how, how, let's say, how are they going to manifest in, in terms of uh, materialistic uh, things, let's say? Yeah, now, K and Rao uh, used to really like Jupiter and Aquarius because it gave Jupiter really kind of intellectual prowess and wisdom. So, I think there are always lots of exceptions. Um, Sanjay Roth is kind of very fond of teaching of, about deep karmic problems in Aquarius. Uh, I mean, nothing is ever totally, you know, cut in stone. I mean, you certainly, if if, if the Lord, you know, if Rahu is exalted in Gemini or Rahu's in Aquarius or Rahu's in Virgo, um, or, you know, and if Saturn's very strong in the chart, if the dispositor of Aquarius is very, is very powerful, uh, Aquarius can be a very powerful sign and may not have a lot of karmic baggage. Um, and if it, if it finds its higher humanitarian values in, in service, um, um, the, the problem with Aquarius often is, you know, because it's co-ruled by Rahu and Rahu just has a lot of karmic baggage around desires, Aquarius often gets pulled down. Uh, but there are, there are always exceptions. And a Jupiter okay. and Aquarius is wonderful. Okay. Okay, yeah, that. And um, I mean, I have one more question, but uh, I'm stopping now. If somebody else has any question, or else I will ask. Okay, let Let's see if somebody else has a question. Um, um, the mics are open. I think all of you are unmuted. You're all in Jojo's overload. I, I know I am. Um, um, Mohini, you have a question? No. 
Okay, uh, you're all ready to go. To, you're all want to take a break. Okay, so Dave, I'll, I'll take your last question. Thank you. Okay, my last question was it's kind of a mixed thing actually because I mean it's actually from my chat. I did not do not want to bring up my chat, but it's actually related to my chat. My my Atmakarak and my Lagna Lord is Mercury. It is in Parivartana with Jupiter and because my Mercury Mercury is in Pisces and it is in Parivartana with Jupiter. And there are like lots of planets associated with Mercury. So like Saturn K2 associated with Mercury and Rahu is associated with Jupiter. So it's kind of a complex situation. I just wanted to know how how uh, you are going to deal with this uh, kind of uh, situation. Yeah, you know, um, uh, because I can't see your chart and I can't look at all the subtle influences, um, I, I, I don't have any opinion on it. Um, uh, you know, I, I think you're kind of usually. Um, I was uh, this 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 uh, this spring. I may teach a new class called, um, you know, Secrets of the Masters, where I, I want to go into like really deep material, um, where you get kind of really advanced knowledge on very complex issues. And I'm I'm thinking of um, doing new lessons on Atma Parka um, in that class because. Um, uh, it, it does get it, it, it's very very important you know it, it's the purpose of this incarnation and you have to really understand it deeply but it's so it's so complex you know you have to look at so many influences. yeah yeah it's kind of it's really I'm, I'm trying to understand that part i mean i still have not got any answers to that so even if mercury let's say is not atma karga let's say just as a planet and uh, let's say as an ascendant lord it's a uh, debilitated but the debility is being cancelled, and also there is a parivartana because Jupiter is in Virgo, so it's they are in the six twelfth axis in my D nine chart. In that case, if we take only this case, how how will it manifest? Because the um, Lagna Lord, the Nietzsche Bhanga is getting cancelled, but it is Nietzsche, but it is getting cancelled. So how is it going to manifest? So the best part are going to come after marriage, so earlier part is going to be suffering. Or is it going to be a normal uh, Nietzsche Bhanga type situation, like you are going to have a fall and then you are going to have a rise? Um, how 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 it's going to go? Yeah, I, I have a lesson on Nietzsche Bhanga in my um, in my transit class in a couple of weeks. Um, it's um, um, uh, the, the general rule with Nietzsche Bonga is, is that when, when and, and most most abilitations do get canceled because there's so many rules for canceling them, um, is that the person has has the problem, but they have the support to get through the problem. So to me, debil the debilitated Mercury has way too active a mind, maybe too caught up in spirituality for Virgo rising, and may not be able to kind of be practical and down to earth in business affairs. And the exchange of houses between the first and the seventh um, is also a sabbatica situation. So to me, it suggests really kind of deep karmic relationship karma. Have you are you are you married or are you not no, married? No, I'm 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 uh, not married. I just have had only one relation, and it was a disaster. Right. So okay. Just because. So, so with the Atmakarka being connected to that one seven axis, you know, obviously, you know, one of your deepest karmic um goals in life is getting better at relationships and so the things that you're not good at debilitated plans have to work through to study at what they're not good at so you need to take a lot of relationship seminars and do a lot of relationship books and get a lot of relationship coach, coaching if you want to get married um and be successful and it may be your whole purpose in this lifetime is working on something that's very hard to do uh thank you no but it's actually not one seven it's actually six twelve in the oh it's six twelve i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah. i um so oh it's six twelve so did you say you're libra rising uh yes i'm libra rising in d9 i'm gemini in d1 and libra rising in d9 so are you talking about the party party apartment in d9 yes 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 exactly okay okay um yeah, I, I, I some, I'm having trouble visualizing it, so I'm going to just table. I'm going to table the answer. Me to, I'd like to see it visually to really kind of work on it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Um, okay. So now that you're on all genetic overload, I'm, I'm going to suggest that you all um, 
go take a walk, even though it's pretty hard. It's, it's like minus three here or something like that. If you're in a good climate, go take a walk, go hug a tree, do something to get out of your head, do some yoga to get in, into your bodies. And um, we'll, those of you who are continuing in the class next week, um, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, the slideshow. Um, for those of you who are not in the class, um, you can request the slideshow from me and I'll translate it um, so, so you can go over the points. Um, those of you who would like to continue studying with me, if you haven't enrolled in Vargin 2, email me if you need a, uh, any special situations. If um, if you if you haven't taken Varga 1 and you'd like to be in Varga 1, also email me and I can work up some situations for you. So again, looking very forward to um, seeing you all again. Those of you who are in the class, we'll see you next week. Um, those of you who are completing Varga 1 and not continuing, um, it's been an honor serving you and being here with you. And uh, I'm sure we'll meet again somewhere on the Jochish Trails. Um, so have a great weekend. Um, and we'll, uh, rest of your weekend, and we'll see you uh, very soon. Take care. Namaste. Thank you, Barry. Bye, Julie. Bye-bye.